The tales of the past are stunning conclusions of events that occurred. As generations elapse, then that conclusion becomes a thing that was said to have happened as opposed to being real. It happens all around us in everyday life, from sporting events to the moon landing. We humans have an overwhelming suspicion that what is going on is being done in a secretive and veiled way. Almost like we are told things deliberately to balance the overall mood of society. Those seeds of doubt are planted in our minds almost subconsciously and realized at a later time. Something then triggers that subconscious thought and we start realizing that things are not exactly as they seem. We call it a conscious awakening and it is happening across the globe on a massive scale. Now what if we were to tell you that the entire planet is not affected in this way? In India, it is openly and widely accepted like common knowledge that the past was incredibly advanced. That the gods walked the earth in the before time and not only that, space exploration was more advanced then than what our wildest imagination dares envision today. Now. Think about this. We do envision a technologically advanced future, a utopia of floating cities in the sky and flying machines. We fantasize about things that are beyond human capabilities today, but not beyond human imagination. In the 60s, the today and now was going to be the future, yet it seems today that more advancements were made in that era. Almost like we were pushing on the boundaries of what was available for us to use on this planet. It's like human thinking is more advanced, but the tools and resources simply are not available on Earth, meaning our thinking abilities are more advanced even with the dumbing down of the human brain to 20% capacity. We think of things that are seemingly impossible. However, they are only made impossible by the lack of resources available to us, which would suggest that at some point, human beings either witnessed or had access to technology that is more advanced than that of today or indeed in the 60s when it was proven that we simply don't have sustainable resources. India is completely rich with stories of the past that seemingly directly contradicts the state of the world today. There are stories and depictions that are thousands of years old that are clearly stating that in the remote past, the ancients of our world had access to technology beyond belief. One such story is that of the bridge Rama Situ or Rama's Bridge. Not only is it said that this thing was constructed over a million years ago, but also to this day the type of rock still present and apparently creating the structure is so anomalous that experts have no clear logical explanation as to how it came to be leaving the age-old tale of construction as the best answer available. Wait till you hear this. The bridge we see today is a place of privilege for Hindus in search of justifying the stories mentioned in the epic Ramayana. Lord Rama and his army of eight men constructed the massive bridge so his army could reach Sri Lanka and rescue his beloved from the grasp of King Ravana. An enormity of curiosity has surrounded the structure since it was first introduced to Western culture around a thousand years ago. Rather than embracing the ancient stories that were already in existence, there has been a collective effort to dismiss the past, even though the evidence of this structure is sitting in plain sight. One curiosity of the bridge is how? Just how was it done exactly? with aging of the structure stretching from 1.7 million years old to the more conservative estimate of 18,700 years old, the obvious questions arise as to how it was raised. What if we were to tell you that the bridge is actually floating on billions of tons of floating rocks, a type of pumice type material that has air trapped on the inside, possibly from volcanic activity, isn't that crazy? A bridge made of rock that floats. You could not make it up if you tried, guys. The limestone shoals and small islands were used in the construction of the bridge. It is said that it took 10 million eight men five days to complete the project and Lord Rama was reunited with his wife. Of course, the historicity of such events are almost taboo in Western culture and it is completely classed as mythology. However, this bridge is proving to be a spanner in the works and it's probably why you wouldn't hear much about it outside India. 
Geologists have, over the years, been very quick to point out that this is a natural feature, like we see at the Bering Land Bridge, but then completely fail to elaborate on their claims. NASA also claimed that photographs captured by the space shuttle prove that this is a naturally occurring chain of sandbanks, but also admit that they can't explain why ancient records accurately match the location of the bridge and surrounding area. Everything checks out with the exception of our understanding of the past. Science relies on logic and proof. According to Hindu belief, Rama Situ was built by Lord Rama to cross the sea. Stones used to make the bridge floated on water, but there is a complete scientific explanation why stones floated on water and why now Rama Situ is underwater. We accept this, so why will science not look at the documented efforts as to how this came to be? It is clear that when certain things don't meet a certain narrative, and when something is to be explained to people in a certain way, and when certain things don't meet a certain narrative, then it is completely ignored. Why though? Why as a collective civilization would we not want to actively understand our history? or rather the history of a previous civilization. This leads to the following thoughts. When an army invades, it has no regards for the society they are invading. They will enforce their own culture on the people and have hold no regard for that culture's past. Is this what we are actively seeing on this planet today, you have to wonder? Only scale that thought up from invading a country to invading a planet. Just a thought. It is strange to consider the type of floating stones, pumice being the obvious candidate, but the actual fact is that the stones found near and around the bridge are far more dense than pumice and not found anywhere else in the world. Nor is there a volcano or signs of volcanic activity within the region surrounding the structure, further adding to the anomaly. It has been heavily documented for thousands of years in 1480, a tsunami displaced the bridge, which was still passable up till this point. However, this also displaced the floating stones, which only add to the evidence surrounding the story of Lord Rama. So we have documentation, oral stories, and even satellite imagery of this epic feat of ancient engineering that is seemingly impossible, yet we need more evidence. Why would an ancient civilization go to the effort of documenting the construction of this thing and lie about it? Why? Simply put, they are not lying, and they had no reason to lie. Of course, there is a lot we don't understand about how things were documented in the past. Things like time scale has changed dramatically over thousands of years, but the collective evidence just mounts up. We will leave it at that for the moment, guys. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Comments below, and remember, the ways by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. Thank you for watching, guys.